So today we are going to be talking about oil leaks. Why? Because my engine actually developed a relatively big oil leak and I decided that it's going to be a great opportunity to show you guys how to locate and fix oil leaks on your engine. So if your engine has an oil leak, you might be wondering why did it even happen? Well, your engine needs oil to run. Without oil, your engine would catastrophically fail within, let's say, a minute. Now, your engine is made of many different parts. And to keep the oil inside the engine, almost all of those parts have seals between them. Those seals prevent oil from escaping, you know, out of your engine. Like everything else, these seals can and will eventually fail. Once they fail, uh, oil will actually come past those oil seals and onto the road surface below your engine. Now, when that happens, you might be tempted to get one of those little bottles, oil stop leak things that, you know, have that written on them and that are supposed to magically stop your oil from leaking out of your engine. If you want to do that, if you're thinking about that, if you think that's a good idea, please leave from this video because that's not how we fix problems on the D4A channel. When you have a cold, you don't try to plug your nose from running, right? You take cold medication or drink some tea or do whatever else you want to do because you want to fix the source of the problem, which is your cold and not the symptom. It's the same with your engine. Don't try to fix the, the, the symptom, try to fix the source of the problem. And that means actually replacing the faulty seal on your engine and stopping the leak from happening. Those little bottles, even if and when they work, they usually work temporarily. Some of them are of really questionable quality and can harm your engine. So with that being said, let's continue with this video. So how do you actually fix an oil leak? Well, to fix the oil leaks, the first thing you got to do is to find it. And sometimes that can be tricky because your engine is this tight little dark space where you can't really see anything. And the problem number two is that many people actually think they have an oil leak when they really don't. That happens because you come to a parking lot, you park your car there, and actually somebody was there before you, just 20 minutes ago, you know, with an actual oil leak. And then you come back to your car and you notice fresh, fresh little oil droplets, you know, right there below your engine. And you think, oh, I have an oil leak. And then you go check your oil level with your oil level with your dipstick and then you see that it's kind of lower than it was before and then you start thinking you confirm that theory that you have an oil leak well the truth might be that you really don't have an oil leak your engine might actually be burning oil it's not escaping from your engine at all it's being burned away inside the engine now some engines are like that by design even brand new from the factory, they burn a bit of oil or your engine might have a lot of miles on it. So it's old and worn out and it's actually burning oil due to its, you know, age and material fatigue. Let's call it like that. So the first thing to do is to confirm that you actually have an oil leak. Now you're going to do that with a simple little trick. You're going to park your car in your garage or your driveway or wherever else you can keep it for a relatively long period of time. You're going to park your car and you're going to get a big, clean, dry piece of cardboard or material or whatever else of really light color. It can be beige or white or whatever, I don't care. It has to be a light color. You're going to get that and you're going to put it underneath your engine. Once you do that, you're going to run your engine. Do not move your car at all. It has to be completely at a standstill and let your engine idle for a while. Let's say 5, 10, 15 minutes. During that time, you're going to get some sort of light source and you're going to look 
at that piece of cardboard that you place underneath your engine. If you notice oil droplets appear on that piece of cardboard, then you have confirmed 100% that you have an oil leak. If those sort of oil droplets, if nothing appears on the cardboard below your engine, then you likely do not have an oil leak or you have an extremely minor oil leak. To confirm an extremely minor oil leak, you're gonna shut off your engine after, let's say, 20, 25 minutes, and you're gonna leave your car and that piece of cardboard like that overnight. Some oil leaks are really small, and it actually takes a pretty long time for, for that little oil droplet to come running down the walls of your engine block, you know, or wherever else, and slowly, slowly make it onto the surface below. So, leave your car overnight, check the cardboard in the morning. Morning. If you notice some sort of little oil droplets, then you have a very minor oil leak. So if you do notice oil droplets on the cardboard underneath your engine, then that cardboard is actually even more useful now because it can help you determine where the oil leak is coming from. By looking, you know, right above the little oil droplet, you can see where the suspected area of the oil leak is on your engine. Now, if your engine has a lot of miles on it, you know, if it's very dirty, if it's driven, driven daily, then you are going to need to clean the suspected area pretty well before you can actually find the oil leak. Because if you try to find it while the engine is, you know, super dirty, full of grime and whatever, you're actually going to be confused and you're going to be thinking that the oil leak is coming from a bunch of different places when it's really not. So once you have cleaned the suspected area, you're gonna run your engine again, and you're gonna let it idle, and you're gonna get your light source, and you're gonna start looking for a place where oil droplets are forming on your engine and leaking down to the road surface. Once you see that spot, you have located your source of your oil leak and you have done a big part of the job. Now, depending on where your oil leak is located, it can, be at a, it can actually be a DIY job, something that you can try to fix yourself and save yourself some money and you know, learn something in the process, or it can be a very labor-intensive job that it's definitely going to require a professional you know, to fix it properly. Now, let's talk about some of the more common locations of oil leaks on an engine. Now, one of the more common locations is your rear main seal. Now, your rear main seal is something that you cannot see by directly looking at your engine, and it sits between your transmission and your engine. And the oil leak is actually gonna manifest itself usually right there, right at the sandwich between uh, your engine and transmission, and it's usually going to be a relatively small oil leak. It happens uh, uh, much more usually on high mileage engine engines than on relatively new engines, and to fix it uh, usually uh, involves a lot of labor, and as such, you know, a lot of money. The rear main seal uh, isn't an expensive part itself. The price ranges from, I don't know, five to, 30, 50 dollars, depending on your car, if it's something really high-end or high-tech. But the labor cost is gonna be much, much higher because replacing the rear main seal usually requires the removal of your entire transmission, or in some cases, your whole uh, engine and transmission combo. And as you can imagine, that is very labor-intensive and not, you know, DIY enthusiast friendly unless you have a engine hoist or a car lift and a bunch of tools. Another really common source of oil leaks is your valve cover gasket. As the name suggests, your valve cover gasket is located right underneath your valve covers. Your valve covers are usually on top of your engine and uh, below them you can find your, find your cams in an overhead cam engine or you can find 
uh, your rocker arm assemblies on a push rod engine. Valve covers are usually pretty well accessible in uh, you know inline piston engines unless you have a boxer engine then valve covers are not as accessible but in 95 percent percent of the engines out there the valve cover is uh, easily accessible and this is something that you can attempt you know as a DIY job to save a bit of money uh, you can remove the valve cover and replace the valve cover gasket and stop your oil leak Another relatively common source of oil leaks is your oil pan. Your oil pan is right there on the bottom of your engine and as the name suggests, this is where your oil sits when you shut off the engine, all of the oil comes dripping down back and it rests in the oil pan. The leak happens between the oil pan and the engine block on your oil pan gasket. When your oil pan gasket fails, oil will come out of this spot. Now, uh, some engines don't even have a gasket there and they just use a sealing compound that you apply to the oil pan, and, you know, directly and just install the oil pan like that. Now, depending on, your, on the type of your car and engine, uh, replacing the oil pan can be a DIY job, not the oil pan, sorry, the oil pan gasket. This can be a DIY job or depending on your car, it can be a really complicated labor intensive job. For example, in uh, front wheel drive cars uh, with you know transversely mounted V6 engines, this sort of combo, removing the oil pan is almost never easy and requires removing the entire uh, front subframe, which, which of course is really labor intensive and definitely not uh, a simple DIY job unless you have you know, some really advanced tools. Another thing that happens relatively often is that people notice oil leaks right after an oil and oil filter change. Now, if you notice an oil leak after you have done this sort of service on your car, then you can only suspect the places that have been touched during an oil and oil filter change. And those three places are the bolt, the oil drain bolt on your oil pan, the oil filter itself, and your oil filler cap. Check all of those three, have they been tightened properly, you know, after the oil change, and you will likely find you're the source of your oil leak that happened right after an oil change. The most common culprit is that uh, the workers at the workshop do not tighten uh, the oil pan bolt enough, or they use an improper washer and this causes a oil leak from your oil pan. So check those and you can fix an oil leak after an oil change uh, really easily yourself. Another relatively common source of oil leaks is your timing cover. A timing cover gasket oil leak can only happen on engines that have a timing chain and not on engines that have a timing belt. Your timing cover on an engine with a timing chain is what protects uh, your timing chain assembly, which is splash lubricated by oil. And this is why some of these oil leaks, because there isn't a, you know, significant oil pressure inside the timing, uh, uh, timing chain cover, uh, these oil leaks tend to be really small and really slow and even hard to notice, depending on the type uh, and location of your engine. This can be relatively easily some intermediate level difficulty to fix yourself or they can be really difficult, difficult to fix yourself. If you have an older car with a longitudinally mounted engine, then access to the timing uh, chain cover can actually be pretty good and you might be able to do this yourself. On transversely mounted engines, access is usually really poor uh, and difficult and it might require a professional hand to get it fixed. Uh, you know, properly. So another question people ask really often is, is it safe to drive with an oil leak? Now this of course uh, is best answered by common sense and the answer is it all depends on how big your oil leak is. It depends on the severity of your oil leak. If you have a very small oil leak 
then of course, if your engine has enough oil in it, it's safe to continue driving. Nevertheless, you should get any oil leak fixed ASAP because in the long run, it is not good for your engine and it's also not good for the environment because oil is dripping down uh, on the road and we all know that engine oil is definitely not good for the environment. If you have a big, you know, uh, oil leak, then definitely it's not safe to continue driving. A severe oil leak uh, where your engine loses, you know, relatively large amounts of oil quickly can drain your engine dry. And we, as we said in the beginning of the video, a dry engine without engine oil is going to fail catastrophically very, very soon. Now, when you notice uh, a large oil leak coming from your engine, you want to stop as soon as possible, stop the car and shut off your engine and get your car towed. If you think you can make it somewhere, it's definitely a big risk. Don't try to do that because it can end up being many, many times more expensive than a towing service. Now, if you're wondering uh, when and how severe uh, oil leaks happen, usually they happen suddenly and due to physical damage to the engine itself. And this most often happens right at the location of the oil pan. The oil pan almost always sits very low uh, in the engine bay and as such it's prone to damage from rocks and other types of road debris. When a rock hits an oil pan it can cause a hole in the oil pan uh, through which oil can escape uh, really quickly. This is a relatively common scenario uh, on some extreme 4x4 you know, vehicles, off-road vehicles, and this is why you will find off-road vehicles having you know, some very serious metal protection on their oil pan. This tells you that the oil pan can be damaged and it can cause you know, severe problems on your engine. Well, I actually did have a severe oil leak and it happened as I was driving down the highway. I was making a zero to 200 kilometers per hour acceleration video and some half an hour down the highway after I made that video, I noticed a oil burning smell. Whenever you notice a very, you know, significant, easily noticeable oil burning smell, it's always a good idea to stop and take a look at your engine because it might be coming from your car I was assuming it was from some other car and then I checked my engine in the back in the rear view mirror I saw a bit of smoke coming from my engine bay and I stopped my car immediately. I shut off the engine and I, and I inspected the engine bay and because I was moving pretty fast the oil was actually splattered everywhere and I noticed that I lost a relatively significant amount of oil. I checked. Uh, my oil level with my dipstick and I noticed that I lost about 30 to 40 percent of my oil. I still had just a bit over half left but I know I was almost at the full mark so this told me that I should not attempt to keep driving. I called a towing service and I had my car towed. Now once I uh, got back to my garage it was time to find the source of my oil leak and I used uh, all of these same tricks that we just talked about. I put a cardboard underneath my car and I saw that there was a big puddle of oil forming right somewhere below my oil cooler hoses. So I suspected my oil cooler. However, when I took my light source and looked more closely, I noticed that the oil was actually dripping down the oil cooler hose onto the ground. But the source was right here at this brass crush washer between my oil uh, core hose union bolt and my oil filter housing. So I took my wrench and tried to tighten this union bolt. When I tried to tighten it, the moment I tried that, the thing just snapped off. This whole threaded part of my oil filter housing snapped off. Now this is a definitely a weird and a rare occurrence and this is n it's not something that's likely going to happen on your car. I attribute this to the fact that this is a 32 year old car and that oil filter housing was simply too tired and maybe the added stress uh, of my high speed acceleration, high RPM drive and the increased oil pressure of that scenario 
led to it finally going, uh, you know, away. Now, I luckily had a spare engine block and a spare oil filter housing, so I removed it from the engine block. And then I cleaned it, and then I reinstalled it and fixed my issue. So as you can see, my scenario was definitely not a typical one, but still I think it was pretty interesting uh, to show you what can happen on a car and what happened to my particular example and how I fixed it. And as you've seen, we used the opportunity to talk more in depth about locating and fixing oil leaks. If you have any sort of additional questions, please feel free to ask in the comments section. I'll be right there and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Also, consider subscribing to the D4A channel. So, that's pretty much it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll be seeing you soon on the D4A channel.